Coming up on Philadelphia Eagles now, are the Birds going to trade Darius Slay? Could they sign Leonard Fournette? And C.J. Gardner-Johnson, very critical of Jonathan Gannon's play calling in Super Bowl 57. Before we get started, though, want to thank everybody for hitting that subscribe button and joining the Bird Gang here at Chat Sports. Yesterday, we eclipsed the great milestone of 42,000 subscribers. And if you want shows on the Birds every single day, this is your spot. So lock us in, subscribe right now, and with that, let's start today's show. Today's Philadelphia Eagles Now is presented by Roan. Some great menswear that you can get 20% off of at roan.com slash chatsports and use the promo code chatsports. We'll tell you more about them later on in today's show, but we put that link in the comment section as well as in the description of this video. All right, let's start with this. Some interesting Eagles trade rumors here as the offseason buildup begins to really pick up some steam, especially with a lot of the buzz coming out of Indianapolis from the NFL scouting combine, including this. Is Darius Slay going to get traded? According to Eagles insider Derek Gunn, who used to work for NBC Sports Philadelphia, was really one of their go-to Eagles reporters, he said that the Eagles could look to trade Slay to free up some money for the 2023 NFL season. Here's a direct quote from D. Gunn as he was talking about this on Jacob Media. Don't be surprised if the Eagles try to use Darius Slay as trade bait to get out from under his contract. Now, obviously the big question with Darius Slay here, he's one of the top cornerbacks in the National Football League. We're talking about a multi-time pro bowler who made it to an all-pro squad back several years ago with the Detroit Lions, and in three seasons as a Philadelphia Eagle, he's played really good football, especially the last two, and there's no question that last year during this Super Bowl run, he was once again one of the top cornerbacks in the National Football League. But the Eagles are a little bit tight on money right now, heading into NFL free agency. The tampering period starts on March 13th, the new official league year kicks off on March 15th. That's when these deals can be made official in free agency, and that's when some of these trades might happen as well. In 2020, after being traded from the Detroit Lions to the Eagles as the Birds and Howie Roseman were desperate to find that island cornerback, Slay agreed to a three-year $50 million contract that has an average annual value of $16.5 million. The base salary going into 2023 is $17 million, and the cap hit in 2023 even higher at 26.1. After 2023, he is going to be an unrestricted free agent so that he can sign with any other team in the NFL if he does not agree to a contract restructure. Obviously, some of these things could change or stay the same. And if he doesn't agree to a contract extension, that he is free to hit the open market in 2024. The thought process here with trading away Darius Slay is that the Philadelphia Eagles re-sign one of their current free agents in James Bradbury, who's not the player of Darius Slay, but there's not like there's a massive drop-off between Slay and Bradbury, both of whom ranked as two of the top cornerbacks in the NFL according to Pro Football Focus in 2022. You could then trade Darius Slay, draft the cornerback either with the 10th overall pick in the NFL draft or at number 30, and in the process, there's not a huge change in that defensive secondary. You're still able to maintain a good level of talent with James Bradbury as your cornerback number one, and then you start to groom that cornerback number two with one of those draft selections. But of course, you run into some concerns there because that rookie might not be ready to take over and fill the shoes of playing really good football on that island cornerback role. Slay played really well in 2022. That's why he was named to yet another Pro Bowl, 40 solo tackles, 14 pass breakups, three interceptions, and a pro football focus grade of 73.1. Howie Roseman has often been very savvy when it comes to some of these trade negotiations. Negotiations. The big question with Darius Slay comes down to this. What is his trade value? At 32 years old, it could give the Eagles some pause with that cap hit of $23 million and the base salary of $17 million. But Darius Slay, even with his age, is a bona fide lockdown cornerback well accomplished in his NFL career, who's gone to five Pro Bowls and was a 2017 All-Pro. 
And in an offensive era here in the National Football League, you need cornerbacks like Darius Slay. And Philadelphia is probably going to lose James Bradbury already if he doesn't re-sign in NFL free agency and if he wants to get paid more money on the free agency market. So you have to tread lightly here. Do you want to trade away Slay, re-sign Bradbury, and then have a rookie cornerback as cornerback number two? Do you want to let Bradbury walk and then pay all that money to Darius Slay? You can still use one of those draft selections at 10 or 30 for another cornerback who you can groom. Something very, very fascinating we're going to continue to monitor during this Eagles offseason. So with that, want to hear from you down in the comment section. Should the Eagles trade Darius Slay? T for trade, K for keep. This is today's poll question, so make sure you chime in. Coming up next on the show, could the Eagles sign Leonard Fournette? Playoff Lenny has been let go by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Stay tuned for that, as well as what C.J. Gardner-Johnson had to say about Jonathan Gannon, ripping him to a certain degree. But first, off the top of the show, I told you the Philadelphia Eagles now today is presented by Roan. Their commuter collection is awesome. I'm wearing their commuter shirt. See how flexible and stretchable this is? Four-way stretch technology on this, anti-odor technology as well. And what I love about it, it fits really well on the chest and in the arms. It's also not too long. And sometimes those dress shirts look way too long. And here's the best deal about it. It's the deal that Roan has to offer for the Bird Gang. 20% off site Y by using the code chatsports at roan.com slash chatsports. Men's closets were due for a radical reinvention. Roan stepped up to the challenge. They knocked it out of the park like Bryce Harper bedlam at the bank at Citizens Bank Park. Roan's commuter collection, the most comfortable, breathable, flexible set of products known to man. And they have products for every occasion. And in the commuter collection, it features comfortable dress pants, dress shirts, quarter zips, as well as polos. The mobility factor, I love it. That's why I love the breathability and flexibility of these shirts. Looking good is easy, and it's time to feel confident without the hassle. And with Roan's wrinkle release technology, wrinkles disappear as you stretch and wear the products. It's that easy. And yeah, you might look at the price tag and say, well, I'm paying for quality here. You're also no longer paying for any trips to the dry cleaner. So one more time, it's roan.com slash chat sports. Promo code chat sports for 20% off. That link is available in the comment section and in the description of this video. Back to Leonard Fournette. Should the Philadelphia Eagles sign Leonard Fournette after he was released by the Buccaneers on Tuesday? A lot of thoughts here because Miles Sanders is going to be a free agent. He could get paid. And even if the Eagles move forward with Kenneth Gainwell or they use a draft selection on a running back, they could use a backup running back, especially a short yardage guy who a lot of fans have been clamoring for. Leonard Fournette can certainly fulfill that role of picking up yards after contact and picking up some of those tough yards as well, especially if the fraudulent NFL outlaws the Philadelphia Eagles quarterback sneak. Stats last year for playoff Lenny as producer Coop is laughing in my ear. By the way, producer Coop, before we had the mics hot, said F the Eagles. So now type F Coop down in the comment section. He's a Cowboys fan. Sucks for him. 16 games played last year for Leonard Fournette. 189 yards, 668 yards, three rushing touchdowns. But also, I think what's become underrated about Leonard Fournette Everybody thinks that he's washed, that he's old. He's 28 years old. I think he needs to shed some pounds. He's also a pretty solid receiving back, though. 73 catches last year as Tom Brady checked it down a lot because you could tell he didn't want to get hit at 45 years old. Three receiving touchdowns. So six total touchdowns last year. And in his career, a long Heavy workload for the former number three overall pick out of LSU by the Jacksonville Jaguars. More than 1,100 carries, so he's well accomplished and well used. More than 4,400 rushing yards. Four yards per carry, solid. Some of those Jags teams were awful. I think that he's flashed a little bit with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers over the last couple of years, and he played really well during that Super Bowl run. 34 uh, touchdowns total in his career to go along with 312 receptions. So it wasn't only just last year that he was receiving the ball out of the backfield. Like he does have that trait to his game and still at 28 years old, why I'm kind of intrigued by the idea of the Eagles signing Leonard Fournette. Miles Sanders could get eight to ten million dollars in free agency. Kenneth Gainwell played really well throughout that playoff run, but the Eagles do have a need on their roster for a cheap 
short yardage and physical back who gives you some versatility with running in between the tackles, but also being a threat to catch the football out of the backfield. And he's familiar with running some RPO like he did at LSU with Jalen Hurts. But according to reports, the Eagles do have a plan at running back. And according to Derek Gunn, it looks like the Eagles are very comfortable with having Kenneth Gainwell as their RB1. I don't think that takes away the possibility, though, of signing playoff Lenny a.k.a. Leonard Fournette in free agency. And if you can get him on the cheap, I happen to like it. Derek Gunn saying that the Eagles love Gainwell. They think that he has the traits to be RB1 in 2023 in the regular season, 53 carries, 240 yards, and four touchdowns. But in the playoffs, 33 carries for 181 yards, average yards per tote, six even. Now, Miles Sanders has said he wants to return. He loves Philadelphia. Howie, just bring me back. But he simply might demand too much money for the Eagles liking in free agency. And for Miles Sanders, this might be one of the last opportunities he has to cash in on a handsome free agency deal. If there's another team out there, like let's say the Miami Dolphins, who need a running back, who have a really good team, and Sanders has offered between 8 to $10 million, he's simply not getting that from the Philadelphia Eagles. They don't value the running back position like that. They understand that you can get backs for cheaper in free agency and in the draft, and very rarely do they sign running backs to a second contract. So that's how I envision things happening in the backfield for the Eagles at that running back spot. So with that, predict it for me. Who will will be RB1 next season? Will it be Sanders? Will it be Gainwell? Will it be a different running back? Voice your predictions down in the comment section right now. CJ Gardner Johnson, let's get to what he had to say about Jonathan Gannon in a since deleted tweet. He's all of Philadelphia and CD Deuce is speaking for all of Philadelphia in ripping Jonathan Gannon and being very critical of him after Gannon talked about what happened in Super Bowl 57 and the lack of his adjustments from the NFL scouting combine. So Elliot Shore Parks had tweeted out this video of Jonathan Gannon talking about what went wrong in the second half against Patrick Mahomes, Andy Reid, and the Chiefs. C.J. Gardner-Johnson said, quote, you ain't put us in a position to make plays. Now, he deleted that tweet. Obviously, a lot of people screenshotted it. And it was all over Twitter very early this morning. Then at 7.03 Central Time, C.J. Gardner-Johnson said, I'm going back to sleep. Look, C.D. Deuce, stand behind what you said because all of Philadelphia agrees with you that Jonathan Gannon choked away partially this Super Bowl and we should have celebrated Another championship right down Broad Street with another Jason Kelsey speech on the steps of the Art Museum where the city of Philadelphia would have been throwing beers and probably Hennessy bottles, Ciroc bottles, tequila bottles to all the players on the floats. Instead, we had to worry and think and go through and deal with a heartbreaking, gut-wrenching defeat to the Chiefs in a game that the Eagles should have won. Obviously, so many reasons for why the Eagles lost that game. Jalen Hurts fumbling the ball away on the Nicholas Bolton scoop and score. The holding call on James Bradbury. Nick Sirianni not going for it late in the game. Quez Watkins not reeling in that pass from Jalen Hurts. So many mistakes. But if Jonathan Gannon's defense could have just forced more than one incompletion on Patrick Mahomes in the second half, made some adjustments, and didn't have his defense schooled on some of those pre-snap motion looks, then maybe the Eagles could have won that Super Bowl 57, and I would have taken part in taking down some Ciroc, as well as tequila, shotgun, and beer taking down the Hennessy and having a party. Instead, I was drowning in my sorrows and I felt as though I was kicked in the testicles. Is C.J. Gardner-Johnson wrong? And for no, not for nah, because I don't think he's wrong. He feels like a lot of us do. And before we hop on out of here, make sure you interact with me. Give me a follow on Twitter and Instagram. It's the same handle on both platforms, at Chase underscore Senior. Turn on your notifications and subscribe because when big news happens, like yesterday, Eagles hiring Sean Desai, promoting Brian Johnson. We put out a video right away. Both of them popped off. And throughout free agency, draft time, we're going to do the same.